Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range with a couple of handguns that our wives are using for their personal defense. And that includes my wife and Jason, the cameraman's wife. Now, originally my wife had picked up a Glock 42. She had shot mine. She really liked how the handgun shot. Uh, there were some ergonomic quirks to it, despite the fact that she didn't really feel comfortable with the gun. Uh, like me, her pinky would dangle off the end. And yes, we know there's extended base plates, but it kind of defeats the purpose of a deep concealment handgun. Um, but, you know, she shot it really well. She's okay with the 380, but she just didn't really care for the ergonomics of the handgun. She has the dexterity to operate the slide, to, to load and shoot the gun. It was just something about it that she didn't really care for over time. So Jason's wife was looking for a handgun as well, and she's had different handguns. And she took a look at what had then came out, which is the Smith & Wesson Shield EZ380. At the time when they purchased this handgun, the 9mm had not yet been introduced. And she liked the handgun because it's light, and the slide is very easy to manipulate. And we'll get into all the features of the EZ models uh, in this video. But later, I believe within the last year, Smith & Wesson introduced a handgun very similar to the 380 EZ. Now we have the MNP Shield uh, 9mm EZ, and this is what my wife just recently went with. So this is her brand new carry gun. So we're going to talk about the features of the guns. We're not going to delve too much into the Glock and the original MP Shield. We'll show the Shield as a, as a basis because this handgun carries the same name. This is the Shield EZ 9mm and this is the Shield, but they're two very different handguns. And we'll get into those details uh, in this video. So without uh, talking too much more, let's go ahead and load up some magazines, start talking about these handguns and why they may make sense for somebody that you know or maybe even for yourself if you're looking for a new defensive carry handgun. When Smith & Wesson introduced the M&P Shield, it was a very popular striker fired polymer framed handgun. A lot of people adopted it. The M&P series of handguns have been popular since Smith & Wesson introduced them so much so they got rid of their old steel framed handguns that I personally miss and really enjoy shooting. But the handgun is reliable, it's small, it's lightweight, striker fired, it checks all the boxes. And a lot of folks like the handgun. I picked one up. This is an early model. This one, when I bought it, when it first came out, all, the only way you could get it was with the, the safety. I really dislike this safety. It's really tiny, it's recessed into the polymer, and it's just not very positive. I mean, positive click on and off, but it's just, it takes a real conscious effort to knock that safety off. It'd be all too easy to leave the, that on. Something bad happens, you draw your gun, dead trigger, and you know, under stress, you may not know what's going on. So. For me, safeties on striker-fired handguns are typically a no-go, but some folks definitely want them. It gives them that tier of safety that they want. They don't trust themselves with the gun for whatever reason. They haven't got enough training, enough trigger time, so they don't realize that their trigger finger is the actual safety, and they want that extra manual safety. Fortunately, Smith & Wesson made it optional later. But again, this is a very early gun. But the handgun, and there's a 2.0 version out, but this handgun holds seven rounds. There is an eight-round magazine available for it, but like most compacts, that pinky kind of dangles unless you get the extended magazine in the gun. The other thing is that, you know, it's a very short barrel and has a fairly stiff slide. So like if my son were to come out here to shoot this thing, he would struggle with pulling that slide to the rear and getting that slide stop up there to lock it to the rear. My elderly mother would not be able to work the slide on this handgun. She's had a Glock 17 for decades and I'm going to have to probably replace that. I tried giving her a double action revolver, but I'm probably going to have to replace that with one of these EZ products, and we'll get into that here in a minute. So this handgun has its little seven round magazine here. This is the flush fit magazine, and the gun shoots really, really well. And like I said, a lot of people like them. Very, very easy guns to shoot. You have your, mag your magazine release here, your takedown lever, slide stop, slide release, and your manual safety. Now, one thing about this handgun is pretty much like any other 9mm on the market. This magazine has no assist tabs on it, and without a magazine loader like an Uplula, you really have to know what you're doing. How many times have you seen a novice 
shooter or somebody with limited dexterity in their hands trying to load a magazine and they're pushing and the round just keeps rolling off and they can't get that and they struggle to get that round in there. Again, that's something that Smith & Wesson wanted to address in the EZ line. Now for me, you know, I'm not so old yet that I don't have my hand strength so I can push the magazine follower down and get all seven rounds into the magazine, but it still even makes my index finger sore when I do it enough. So, great gun, but quite possibly not for everybody. Smith & Wesson took a look at the shield and they thought, let's make this handgun friendlier to people that might have limited dexterity mobility in their hands. Perhaps you're injured at work, you have arthritis, uh, you're elderly, a new shooter. There's a number of people, a number of reasons why you might want to make a gun that's friendlier to folks that don't have that hand strength because there's plenty of them out there. My mom is included. Now my wife does have the hand strength to operate most modern automatics, but she still liked that, the concept and Jason's wife liked the concept, this is Jason's wife's gun, of a very easy slide to manipulate. You'll notice the sights are smooth for carry. There's no shelf there, but yet I can just run my hand across the top of the thing and act, actuate the slide. That's how light that recoil spring is. Now with the 380, it's a very light gun. Overall balances very nicely in the hand. You'll notice that I have all my fingers on it, even though I don't have a magazine in it. It's a very comfortable gun to shoot. Now, when these handguns first came out, they had manual safeties. Later, they made them available without the manual safeties. So you have your mag release right here, have your takedown lever, slide stop slide release, and an ambidextrous safety. You'll also notice on the rear of the slide, there is a cutout there, kind of like the VP9. The VP9 uses a piece of polymer that's held in by the rear sight. Smith & Wesson machined these little ears on the back of the slide that even coupled with the semi-aggressive texturing of, of those slide serrations with those ears, there's no doubt, even with very weak index finger and thumb, you're gonna be able to pull that slide to the rear. Another thing they addressed was loading the magazine without the assistance of a magazine loader. Again, a lot of shooters struggle with loading those magazines. So what they did is they put tabs on the EZ 380. Now on this particular model, this tab sticks out further than the one on the other side of the magazine, but one is slightly longer than the other. I wanna point that out because they changed that later. Now, this handgun has a couple of different safeties going on here. We have the manual safety, what I call an active safety, then the semi-passive safety, which is a grip safety. I'm not a huge fan of grip safeties. I don't like them on the XD. I love them on the 1911. I don't know why, just because that's the way the gun was made and John Moses Browning was incredible. But generally speaking, grip safeties aren't something that I, I want on a new modern handgun. Smith & Wesson put it on here and they removed, if you take a look at the original shield, you have that segmented inertial safety trigger. Uh, they took a different approach than Glock. Glock has the little extra tab that sticks out in the middle of the trigger. Smith & Wesson has a two piece trigger that, that hinges on the bottom. And what that is is inertial safety. So if the, the gun is dropped on its rear end, the mass of the trigger won't pull its own trigger. It's a, and, and I call it a dingus. And so uh, some of the internet experts give me a hard time for calling it a dingus jokingly because they don't think I know what inertial safety is. But that is absent from the EZ line. So you just have a regular trigger, have your grip safety, which is passive if you grip the gun right, and then you have your manual safety. Now another thing that's interesting is that the gun has a loaded chamber indicator. So on top here, right now it's setting down. I can run my finger across the top and I don't feel anything. Even when the slide's home, there's nothing there, okay? On the M&P, you have to look down a little tiny hole. Good luck seeing if there's a round in the chamber in the dark there. Here, I can run my finger across the top. It's not loaded, take magazine, insert it into the gun, it inserts very easily even with the slide home. Nothing there, pull the slide to the rear, let it go. And now you can see that sticking up and it's pretty pronounced. So to um, a novice shooter, they're gonna look at the gun and go, oh yeah, there's definitely something in there. And if you can't see, you can run your finger across the top of it and you're definitely gonna tell there's a round in the chamber. Now, Mr. Guns and Gear pointed out something that I thought was interesting. 
And I haven't had that problem with the, with the guns, with the manual safeties, but he clearly did. If you have a deep grip on the gun and you fire it, that's, that safety's off right there. But under a recoil, the gun can kick back and your thumb can knock that safety on because it's a very short throw. Now you have a dead trigger. So if you're gonna run one of these safeties, I highly recommend you run it like a 1911. And when I say that, you brush that safety off with your thumb and ride that safety, okay? So now let's do a little bit of shooting with a 380 EZ. Very mild recoiling little handgun. All right, so you know, it, it has almost no recoil impulse. Very flat shooting handgun, gonna be very friendly to somebody that's maybe a new shooter that might be recoil sensitive or to somebody that has arthritis in their wrist, it's not gonna be painful to shoot. Very easy little gun to shoot, hence the name EZ. Now we step it up to the EZ9 shield. And this just came out within the last year or so. They took the concept of the 380 EZ and made it into a caliber that would compete with the shield that was, you know, been on the market for several years. Once again, Smith & Wesson. This is basically just a slightly bigger version than the 380. All the features are the same that I just covered. I can still move the, the slide very easily. Doesn't take much effort whatsoever. All the controls are the same. You have the optional manual safety. Um, you know, have it installed from the factory or you can get it without that safety from the factory. But all the controls, everything's the same, right down to the three-dot sights, which are windage adjustable, just not elevation adjustable. Low chamber indicator, all that good stuff. And now we have a new magazine where the tabs have slightly changed. You can clearly see the loaded rounds and the, you know, the numbers, so you have clear indication of how many rounds are in the magazine. But the tab is identical on both sides of the magazine now. I'm gonna go ahead, load the gun up. Again, you can easily insert the magazine into the gun. Some guns you can really force them to do that. And some guns, like with my M17, you would struggle to get it past that first round. Guys, you can just, real, real simple and easy to do. Again, manual safety, ride it like a 1911. There's still a little shooting with the nine millimeter version. Again, very muted recoil impulse. It doesn't jump around a whole lot. And for a novice shooter or somebody that might be recoil sensitive, this gun's gonna be real pleasant for him to shoot. Now, some people have said that this thing is heavier in an awkward way versus the 380 version. And there, there's truth to that. This gun balances very well. The weight seems to be balanced right. On this handgun, it's nose heavy. There's more weight out here. We're shooting a much more powerful cartridge than 380 with this nine millimeter. So the gun's only slightly bigger, holds the same eight rounds as the 380. It's not that much bigger than the 380, but they had to do something if they were gonna keep that light recoil spring. And that something was they had to add some mass to the slide. There's no free lunch in physics. So if you're gonna make the spring lighter, you're gonna to have to add mass to the slide or you're gonna to have to come up to, with another mechanical solution. So they just added some weight to the slide and kept that spring very easy to operate. Loading it is just like the 380. Very easy to do. Use your thumb. If you need to, you can use two fingers to pull it down. And again, easily accomplished. Now, the one thing, now another thing is I have the safety on and with the safety on, I can still pull the slide to the rear. All right, so I can push up on the slide stop slide release. And so you can stick a magazine in there, drop the slide stop slide release with that safety on so the gun's safe the entire time that you're doing it. Now with grip safeties, you guys are probably wondering, well, what happens if you get a low grip on the gun? You don't get a good positive grip on the gun. Well, let me show you. I'm gonna take the safety off. I'm gonna put my hand right about there. How many times have you seen a novice grab a gun like that? All right. You're panicked, you grab your gun, you don't have a very deep, proper grip. You just kind of grab it and you go to shoot. You'll even see this at competitions. Guys that are you know, extremely experienced, sometimes you just get a bad draw and are you gonna be able to you know, 
deactivate that safety with a low grip like this where I can actually stick my index finger underneath the beaver tail, well, yeah, the gun's going to work for you. So it doesn't require a very deep grip. So the grip safety, uh, some folks have said, replaces the inertial safety on the trigger, making it drop safe. But there's something else going on. There's a big difference between the original shield and the shield EZs. Let's take a look at what that difference is. Real quick, let's take a look at the inside of the MMP shield. I'm gonna first drop the magazine out of the gun, push up on the slide, stop slide release, lock the slide to the rear, make sure that the weapon is empty. From there, I can rotate my disassembly lever down, and when I release that slide, stop slide release, that's not coming off. That's because I have to pull the trigger first, point it in a safe direction, pull the trigger, and now the gun comes apart. Now, here's the real big difference between the EZ and the original striker fired shield. It's striker fired. You can see the striker right there. There's the plunger. So when you pull the trigger, plunger gets pushed up, striker gets released, and gun goes bang. Okay? That's all I wanted to point it out, point out on the original shield. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together now and set it aside. The 380 and the 9mm EZ disassemble the exact same way, so I'm not going to talk about um, doing both of them in terms of disassembly. So to make sure that the weapon is safe, I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine out of the 9mm. I'm going to go ahead and push up on the slide stop slide release, pull the slide to the rear, check to make sure that the weapon is empty. Once again, I can rotate the disassembly lever down, and when I hit that slide stop slide release, you're going to want to have a hold of that slide because now it comes right off the frame, no trigger pull required. All right. Now, this is where things get different. And this is where I think the easy name isn't so easy. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to set the slide, or I'm sorry, the frame down. I'm going to point out that there's this big area in there where my index finger can fit into the slide. See how it's hollowed out inside there? There's no striker. Over here on that side, there's a, there's a safety. That's your firing pin safety, and I'll show you how that works. On the frame of the gun, if I push on the grip safety, see this little piece going up? That pushes up on that plunger and allows the firing pin to now move freely forward. So the grip safety has to be gripped. That now frees up the firing pin to move forward, and it does replace the inertial safety that would be on the trigger. Only difference is, is if this gets dropped on the edge of something, it can still go off where the inertial safety would prevent that from happening. But that grip safety is what frees up the firing pin. And I say firing pin because when I take the safety off and I pull the trigger, there's a hammer. The easy line is hammer fired. It is not striker fired. It's a pretty big difference. So very much a different handgun. One striker fired, the easy is hammer fired. Now when you go to take your recoil spring out, you're going to want to take note of the rear end of the recoil spring. It has two flats and two round sides. You'll notice that the round side is pointing up. That is critical to being able to reassemble the gun without cussing. I'm going to take the recoil spring and guide rod out. It is steel and it is captive. Very easy to do. You want to remember that the big end points that way. The little end points out the front and you can test that before you put it together simply by pushing to make sure that the guide rod travels freely out the front of the handgun. Okay, take the recoil spring out and now you have just a typical browning action with the barrel. Inside you can see the block that's pinned in place. There's a pin right there in the slide. That pin holds that internal block which has your firing pin in it and your grip safety release. Putting it back together, this is where you're going to want to take note. Put the barrel in, push it all the way to the rear, take your recoil spring, the big end goes this way, little end out the front, but make sure you'll see there's two flats. If you put this together with the flat facing down like this and put it on the perch, 
you go to reassemble the gun with the flat facing down, you can only pull the slide back that far, and that's not, not, that's not far enough to reassemble the gun. It needs to be all the way up there where my thumb is. It will not go any further. That's because it won't travel inside this trough right here. Now, why Smith & Wesson did that, I have no idea, because that would be somewhat confusing, potentially, to a novice shooter. So you want to make sure that the flat's to the side and that the round is down or up. Another thing that you're going to want to be aware of, naturally you're going to want to grab the gun like this, put the slide on the rails and pull it to the rear, but it's not going to go. That's because that little grip safety, see how it pops up? The slide's going to hit it. It can also hang up in that dished out area I showed you, so if you get it past that and then apply the grip safety, it's going to stop moving again because now it's hanging up on that little dished out area for the hammer to travel in. So when you're putting the gun together, you cannot depress that grip safety. Take your hand off the grip safety, pull it all the way to the rear, lock it, rotate the disassembly lever, and the gun is reassembled. Now, that's the only thing I can ding the EZ for. There's nothing easy about the reassembly of the gun. You're going to have to pay close, atten close attention to how you put it back together. Otherwise, you're going to struggle with it. All right? But simple learning issue. Learn your firearm, and it won't become a problem. But to a new shooter, that may be an issue. Overall, I think that the EZ is a great product. I think it definitely targets an audience that needs some attention because many times firearms manufacturers don't take into consideration that there's going to be folks out there that may not be able to use the firearm because they just don't have the hand strength for whatever reason. So the EZ is a product line that I think makes a lot of sense. It makes sense for my wife, makes sense for Jason's wife, and I think it's going to make sense for my elderly mother. So. Um, yeah, I think it's a good product line. Uh, we've had no problems with it feeding. Uh, Jason's been shooting his 380 for quite some time. The guns have been out for a while. You can find the 380s online with a shooter's kit at Palmetto State Armory for $329. That gives you the gun, eyes and ears, and a bag. And that's $329, so the 380 is very affordable. The new 9mm is a little bit more expensive, has a full MSRP of around $499, but you can find them online for right around $399. So it's just a little bit more expensive than the 380. But the 9mm, I think, um, really ups the game. 380 is a good defensive caliber, but it's kind of at the very bottom. That's about as far as I would go. I wouldn't go anything less than 380. 9mm is where I like to be. So uh, for my wife, I think the 9mm works great. I think it's a step up from her, her Glock 42. I like the fact that she's using 9mm and can get you know great defensive ammunition for it. But I wouldn't, you know, if you're not wanting to shoot 9mm, 380 isn't a horrible choice. But with the 9mm on the market, I definitely personally opt for the 9. The controls and stuff are just as easy on the 9 as they are on the 380. All right, guys, if you have any questions, ask those questions down below. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, because we're not supported by uh, the gun manufacturers, we're supported by our viewing audience. That's so we can be as honest and unbiased as humanly possible. A couple of ways you can support us. First of all, you're watching the video on YouTube right now, and either with your mobile device or your desktop, you're going to see a little Join button. Click that Join button, check out some of the perks, and consider becoming part of our membership uh, team here on YouTube. Also, there's a link down below to Patreon and Subscribestar. Go by our Patreon link, check it out, check out some of the perks, and consider becoming part of our Patreon family. And if for whatever reason you don't like Patreon or YouTube, again, we do have Subscribestar. Guys, thanks for 12 years of support. Swing by, check out coppercustom.com, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Very pleasant little gun to shoot. Thanks for watching.